Recently, China's national TV stations have been frequently broadcasting similar news in high profile. The Eastern Theater Command of the Chinese People's Liberation Army started joint military drills surrounding the island of Taiwan from 7:45 Thursday. The drills are being conducted in the Taiwan Strait, the north, south, and east of Taiwan Island, as well as areas around the islands of Kinmen, Mazu, Wuchiu, and Dongying. Li Shi, spokesperson of the Theater Command, said military services, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Rocket Force, are being organized to conduct the joint drills, codenamed Joint Sword 2024A, from Thursday to Friday. The drills focus on joint air-sea combat readiness patrol, joint seizure of comprehensive battlefield control, and joint precision strikes on key targets, Li said, adding that the exercises involve the patrol of vessels and planes closing in on areas around the island of Taiwan and integrated operations inside and outside the island chain to test the joint real combat capabilities of the forces of the command. The drills also serve as a strong punishment for the separatist acts of Taiwan separatists and a stern warning against the interference and provocation by external forces. In other words, the Chinese military suddenly assembled its army, navy, air force, rocket force, and other forces to conduct joint exercises around Taiwan from May 23rd to 24th. The intent to provoke and warn Taiwan is evident. Their target is Lai Qingde, the new president of the Republic of China who took office on May 20th. <laughs> The new president is portrayed by the communist official media as an enemy of China. On May 21st, the spokesperson of the Taiwan Affairs Office of China criticized Lai's inauguration speech as stubbornly insisting on Taiwan's independence, vigorously promoting the fallacy of separatism, inciting cross-strait confrontation, and attempting to rely on foreign countries and force to seek independence. The Chinese official media also extensively criticized Lai's inauguration speech. As noted by a member of the Political Bureau of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, the One China Principle shall not be violated. The separatist activities for Taiwan independence will not lead anywhere, and China's reunification is an irreversible trend. Every time when the separatist forces of Taiwan independence created trouble, the international community's consensus of staying committed to the One China principle will be further consolidated, and their understanding and support for China's position will be enhanced. In my opinion, because this topic will come up when chatting with family, and I feel like the current situation is relatively tense. From both my family's and my own views, it's rather complex, and sometimes anger is involved. I think using military force is, how do you say it? Anyways, the military force is certainly the least preferable solution. Force should unequivocally be the last resort. We should support peaceful reunification as our priority, rather than considering the use of force to reclaim it. But if there's no other way in the end, we just hope there won't be any troublemakers showing up. Yeah, that's it. So what did the new president of Taiwan say at his inauguration on May 20th? In Taiwan's political landscape, there are three camps. The blue camp, Kuomintang, the white camp, People's Party, and the green camp, Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP. In this election, the green camp won the position of president, marking the DPP's third term. However, the green camp failed to achieve a majority in the legislature. In other words, the pro-Beijing Blue Camp and White Camp coalition has won a majority in the legislative yuan. It has cast a dark cloud over the DPP's ability to govern. In his inaugural speech, Lai Qingde used the Constitution of the Republic of China to elaborate that the two sides of the Taiwan Strait aren't subordinate to each other. 
He was assertive and rational, neither servile nor overbearing. He said the status quo of the Taiwan Strait must be maintained. We want to thank the world's attention and support for Taiwan. We also want to declare this to the world. Taiwan makes no concessions on democracy and freedom. Peace is the only option and prosperity is our goal for long-term peace and stability. The future of the Taiwan Strait plays a decisive role to the future of the world and as the people who takes over the democratic progress of Taiwan. The new government will steer peace and maintain the status quo, being neither overbearing nor self-effacing. I also want to call on China to stop threatening Taiwan politically and militarily, take on global responsibility of maintaining peace and stability to ensure the world is free from the fear of war. What Lai said in his speech, the Republic of China and the People's Republic of China are not subordinate to each other, was widely noted. It suggests that Lai is more assertive toward Beijing than his predecessor Tsai Ing-wen. It isn't clear what the CCP had in mind. On May 20th, when the inauguration ceremony took place, the PLA didn't make much of a fuss over Taiwan. Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense reported that from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. that day, eight CCP warships were detected operating in the vicinity of the Taiwan Strait, and that both U.S. military planes and the CCP's aircraft crossed the median line of the strait and the southwest airspace. Prior to May 20th, Chinese PLA planes continued to cross the median line and intrude into Taiwan, the closest being just 43 nautical miles from the Taiwanese city of Jilong. We have the ideal to pursue peace, but we must not have illusions. Before China giving up using force to invade Taiwan, citizens must understand this. Even if we accept all of China's claims and give up our sovereignty, China's ambition to annex Taiwan will not disappear. We must work together with democratic countries to form deterrence and avoid war, to achieve the goal of peace with our strength. On the day of Lai's inauguration speech, China's social media platform Weibo blocked hashtags related to Lai's inauguration ceremony. Some Weibo users posted screenshots of a live broadcast of Lai's inauguration, but the images were quickly deleted by the platform. One Weibo user complained, After searching the news all day, I don't even know what Lai actually said. At the inauguration ceremony, both Lai Qingde and Vice President Xiao Mei Qin looked heavy. For them, what's even tougher is to face the interference from within Taiwan. This was the scene in front of Taiwan's legislative yuan on May 21st, the day after the presidential inauguration ceremony. More and more people, mainly young people, gathered in front of the legislative yuan to protest against the joint action of the blue and white camps. The story has been developing. By May 22nd, 30,000 people had gathered outside the legislative yuan. The crowd at the scene chanted slogans and held different banners, such as Black Box Parliament is Democracy Killer. No discussion, no democracy. No discussion, no democracy. It's the siege of the legislative yuan, and so on.
今天这么多人站出来之后，对于这些民意代表是一个非常有力的警告。The so-called parliamentary reform promoted by the blue and white parties is simply put to deprive the president of his normal executive powers and to restrain Taiwan's new president Lai Ching-te from exercising his due power in fighting the CCP. Specifically, it involves five major aspects. First, the legislative power of investigation and hearing. Second, the regularization of the president's national situation report. Third, the crime of contempt of Congress. Fourth, the registered voting system for president and deputy president. And fifth, strengthening the right to consent to personnel. Among them, the regularization of the president's State of the Union report not only requires the president to report on a regular basis, but also requires the president to respond to any oral questions from legislators in an orderly and timely manner. When the blue and white parties pushed forward relevant congressional reform bills, they obviously relied on their numerical advantage after joining forces to suppress the DPP's voice in the legislative yuan. In the process, many fierce conflicts arose in the legislative yuan. The DPP legislators are fighting members from the Guomindang and the People's Party fiercely. On the evening of May 21st, Taiwan's first semiconductor company, the UMC founder, also rushed outside the legislative yuan to show support. The 77-year-old man's analysis of the entire situation is insightful. He told the protesting crowd, I am 77 years old today. I am famous and rich. I don't need anything. But I can't see Taiwan, a good, democratic and free country, turning into a very bad situation like Hong Kong. He said that over the past two decades, the Chinese Communist Party has been waging war against Taiwan non-stop in three forms. The first is psychological warfare. Psychological warfare is to threaten you with military force so that you are afraid, wanting to surrender and compromise. The second is public opinion war. It's to make use of media in Taiwan, which is tainted by the Red Regime, to spread confusing narratives that twist right from wrong and black from white on a daily basis. Under such fabrications in Taiwan, the DPP is treated as an enemy and the CCP as a friend. Thirdly, the CCP has also launched a legal war. After utilizing psychological warfare and public opinion warfare to confuse many Taiwanese, the CCP obtained a majority in the legislative yuan. The current bill on expansion of power is to turn the legislative power into a legislative dictatorship by suppressing the executive power and the judicial power. What happens after the dictatorship? In the future, it can command the executive yuan and the judicial yuan of Taiwan, and finally, it can also command the police and the army. In the future, it will be able to legislate to command the army to oppress the Taiwanese people. Taiwan will then become Hong Kong. So the CCP is turning the legislative yuan of Taiwan into its legislative council of Hong Kong, using the form of democracy to undermine democracy. It looks like certain political parties in Taiwan that have been infiltrated by the CCP don't really cherish the democratic system that they have at the moment. Taiwan was ceded to Japan on April 17, 1895 by the then Qing Dynasty government of China and became a colony under Japanese rule. In 1945, at the end of the Second World War, Japan declared its surrender and Taiwan was returned to China, the then Republic of China or ROC. In 1949, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, occupied mainland China and established the People's Republic of China, or PRC. The ROC government retreated to Taiwan. In the 1990s, Taiwan embraced full-scale democracy. 
Since 1996, when the first direct presidential election was held, Taiwan has gone through four changes of political parties, and its people have enjoyed a democratic and free lifestyle, making Taiwan a beacon of democracy in Asia. In 2022, Taiwan's per capita GDP was U.S. $35,510, surpassing that of Japan and Korea and becoming the largest in East Asia. The per capita GDP of Communist China was U.S. $12,741, which is only about one-third of Taiwan's level. On January 13, 2024, Taiwan's fifth direct presidential election, Lai Ching-de and Xiao Mei-chin of the DPP were elected as the 16th president and vice president of the Republic of China, or ROC. Lai Ching-de is a legendary figure in Taiwanese politics. His experience from the son of a miner to a doctor to the president is like a representative of the Taiwan dream. Less than 100 days after Lai was born, his father died of carbon monoxide poisoning in the mine, leaving his mother to raise six children alone. When he grew up, he became the first student in the local mining area to attend Jiangguo Middle School, the best boys high school in Taiwan. After graduating from college, he became the chief physician at a hospital in Tainan and gained a very good reputation. Becoming a doctor was his mother's expectation for Lai Qingde, but Lai's ambition changed. Because of his upright character, diligence, and hard work, Lai Qingde went from National Congress representative and legislator to Tainan mayor, executive president, vice president, and elected president without ever losing an election. He also wears a full suit and tie all year round, which is said to be his way of expressing respect and discretion. Taiwanese media reported that Lai Qingde was cautious and strict in employing people. A party and government figure once said that after Lai Qingde became the mayor of Tainan, he told his secretary never to accept gifts, even local produce. One time, Lai Qingde found an unexpected gift box in the car. He replaced his secretary in anger. So why did Lai Qingde give up his career as a doctor and choose to enter politics? In 2023, as a presidential candidate, Lai Qingde published an article in English for the Wall Street Journal entitled, my plan to preserve peace between China and Taiwan, he laid it out in the beginning. That moment changed the course of my life. At that time, the Taiwan Strait was threatened by missiles and live fire drills, and the access of merchant ships to and from the strait was hampered by China's military ambitions. I decided that I had a mission to participate in Taiwan's democracy and to protect this emerging democracy from being jeopardized. After I took off my white robe from being a public opinion representative, a cabinet member, a vice president, and now a presidential candidate, I realized that my role is the same as my political predecessors, who defended the security of the Taiwan Strait back then. At this point in time, my determination and commitment to defend Taiwan's peace and stability, its democratic achievements, and the cross-strait status quo are unshakably strong. The reason why Taiwan isn't a sovereign nation in the full sense is that it lacks international recognition, especially since the major international organizations haven't yet accepted Taiwan as a full member of a sovereign state. But regardless, Taiwan has the elements of an independent political entity. Now, Taiwan's security depends on the U.S. As we can see, the U.S. principle is that it doesn't want China to annex Taiwan. And at the same time, it doesn't want to cause a war because of Taiwan's independence, which is why Lai Qingde emphasized that the status quo should be maintained in the Taiwan Strait. As a matter of fact, during the past eight years of the DPP's rule, Taiwan has gained more and more international friends. U.S. Secretary of State Blinken issued a statement on May 20th congratulating President Lai on his assumption of office as well as congratulating President Lai and the people of Taiwan and saying that he looks forward to continuing to work with President Lai to advance U.S.-Taiwan common interests and values and to maintain peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Leaders such as the Speaker of the House of Representatives Mike Johnson, Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Honorary Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and key leadership groups such as the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Two Houses and the Special Committee on China of the House of Representatives, and heavyweight members of both legislative chambers successively expressed their congratulations in the form of congratulatory letters, statements, or social media tweets. U.S. President Biden sent an informal, high-level, cross-party delegation consisting of former government officials to Lai's inauguration. This demonstrates the strong cross-party support for Taiwan's democratic achievements in both houses of Congress.
Ralph Gonsalves, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a friend of the ROC, also came to Taiwan for the inauguration ceremony. He called President Lai my brother William and emphasized the strength of the Taiwan St. Vincent and the Grenadines friendship. Gonsalves said that he was raised to value loyalty and never abandon a friend. The Prime Minister also said that St. Vincent is the only country in the Eastern Caribbean that doesn't sell passports or citizenship, and that there are many European and Middle Eastern brokers who try to buy and sell St. Vincent passports, as well as Chinese companies that are deeply involved in the business, and that these business people are the source of funds behind the New Democracy Party, which has a great deal at stake. Although Japan doesn't have formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan, the two sides have cooperated frequently especially after former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe put forward the argument that if Taiwan has trouble, Japan has trouble, and the U.S.-Japan alliance has trouble. The Japan-Taiwan relationship has further risen to the strategic level of a common destiny. On May 20th, more than 30 members of the Japanese Diet went to Taiwan to congratulate the president on his inauguration. In response, the Chinese ambassador to Japan made threatening remarks. On May 22nd, Japan's chief cabinet secretary responded that Japan had protested against the Chinese ambassador's highly inappropriate remarks about Taiwan. Japan reacted quickly to Beijing's punitive military exercises around Taiwan. Japan's chief cabinet secretary said on May 23rd that Tokyo would directly and clearly communicate to Beijing the importance of maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Japan's top government spokesperson said at a press conference that it was important to work with the U.S. and other allies to convey their common stance over China-Taiwan relations.